Coil and magnet? Coil and magnet. Which one's more important? Or are they both? Welcome everybody to Guitar Tone Central. I'm Mark and today we're going to talk about coils and magnets. Now you know that in an electric guitar the beginning of your tone, what initiates the signal, is this coil and magnet, little assembly, the pickup. And what's at the other end of the line, right before it hits your ears? Coil and magnet assembly, your speaker. Difference is you've got a paper cone in here, of course, but essentially your, your tone starts and ends with a coil and magnet. So it stands to reason if this coil and magnet is important and the nuances of how these are made, then it also matters quite a bit the nuances of how these are made. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a uh, um, discussion on a couple of these and we're going to A-B them and we're going to let you hear what they sound like and come to some interesting conclusions, I think, at the end. Before we get started, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Click down below and also subscribe with the notification bell so that you can get a message when our latest episode is ready. And thank you very much for being here. We greatly appreciate your time. So let's have some fun. We've talked a lot about in past episodes about pickups and tested all kinds of pickups. So we're, this is a single coil, this is a single coil. That's not so much as important as how these are made. Similar kind of concepts. You have different windings, you have different types of magnets, whether it's a ceramic, an alnico, um, of course the paper cone in a speaker determines how it sounds. What we're going to do today is we're going to do a little bit of A-B comparison with two speakers that are known very well, and particularly in the rock and roll world, but they can be used for anything. So the two that we're going to consider and that we have loaded up today in enclosed cabinets, and this is important because speakers sound different when you have an open back or a closed back cabinet. So to keep this consistent, we put two speakers, both of them 75 watt, 12 inch speakers. We put them both in the exact same cabinet, closed back, so you can really hear the AB difference of the characteristics of one and the characteristics of the other. Now in front of me, one of those speakers, it's an Electrovoice SRO. This is an ancient puppy. This is from the 1960s. And um, the other speaker is, a, and it's a USA, Electrovoice is a USA company. The other is a Celestion which is a British company, a Celestion G12T75, and we're gonna post pictures here of both of those speakers so you can see what they look like. But a little bit of difference, Why they're both 75 watts, they're both 12-inch um, speakers, what makes them different? The, some of the interesting things are sometimes look into the background of these companies, Celestion and e Electrovoice were both started in the 1920s. Right, Celestion was in London, and a lot of people know Celestion speakers from Marshall, and um, that's actually not where they got their, their big name being in Marshall cabinets. But um, they started in the 1920s, and uh, Celestion had, a, with the Great Depression and World War II, had all kinds of difficulties. They were making little speakers for radios and, and making little enclosures for the radios so you could hear your radio broadcasts uh, better back then. And um, come the 1960s, they were getting into speakers. They came out with a, a, a musical speaker called the G12, which went into an amp called the Vox AC30, very famous amp from Vox Amplification. And guess who used the Vox AC30? The Beatles. So as that amp became famous with the Beatles, so did, so did the Celestion G, G12 um, uh, speaker. Now, the speaker we're testing today is called the G12T75. That didn't come out until about 1985. And um, it's, a, it's a ceramic magnet speaker, weighs about 7.7 .7 pounds. That's, they still make it to this day. Uh, so you can, you can buy those and put them in your cabin. It's really that speaker and the uh, Vintage 30, Celestion Vintage 30, are the two main speakers that, that have probably the most familiarity for a lot of, for a lot of guitar players. So um, that's, that's the background. And, and, and they're known for rock, 
back in the mid 80s that that G12 T75 became famous in, in Marshall cabinets used by guys like Ingve Momstein and Joe Satriani. A lot of rock guys had them. They had a very, um, I don't know, tight, tight over, overdrive sound to them and what that's part of what made them popular. Now, the Electrovoice SRO, they started also in the 1920s, but not as a speaker company, as a microphone company. And something interesting I discovered was that during World War II, well, first of all, they innovated a few things in, in microphone technology back, back in those days, I think in the 30s, uh, they had what's called a humbucking microphone. And it's funny, we have humbucking cartridges now that cancel out noise. Well, engineers at EV figured out that Hum, winding the coils in opposite directions would also cancel out background noise for a microphone because this is very similar to a microphone anyway um, and it will even pick up vibration you could even talk into these in the unpotted pickups in some in a lot of guitars because that vibration is picked up and then the 1940s world war ii came along and one of the problems was you're out in the field, bombs are going off, bullets are, are flying, machine guns are rattling. You're trying to talk, um, talk to somebody on the radio. About 20% of the conversation was audible. The rest was just noise, terrible noise, very hard to hear anything. So EV came up with a new microphone they called the T45 that killed most of that background noise. Now, instead of only hearing 20% of what somebody's trying to tell you, you're hearing 90%. And it revolutionized that. And, and the military gave them a contract. And man, they just took off. They had thousands of employees from that and were making thousands of micro microphones every month for the military. A great success for Electrovoice. But they came out with this SRO speaker. I think it was in the 1960s. So comparing it to the Celestion, uh, this is also rated for uh, 75 watts. However, instead of weighing 7.7 .7 pounds, this weighs 19.8 pounds. It is massively heavy. In fact, they call this the coffee can speaker because this right here, uh, this magnet is shaped like a coffee can. So it got that nickname, but it weighs a ton compared to the other uh, speaker. And for the same rating, usually you have a bigger magnet to handle more power. And there are a lot of people that have used these with 100 watt amps uh, without a problem. But we think Electrovoice probably overrated them just to make sure they could handle the power. But man, these things are backbreakers. Anybody that put these in a 212 cabinet uh, with an amp like a Fender Twin Reverb, man, you're, you're killing your back. Lugging it around. But the sound was fantastic. Some even believe this was the greatest rock sounding speaker ever. This one, of course, is in terrible shape. The one that we have in our cabinet today is restored. So it has a brand new cone in it, brand new EV voice coil. It's been restored, looks a lot, repainted too, looks a lot nicer than this. But I just wanted to have this to show you guys um, what that does. Now, allegedly these were discontinued in 1968, so you can't buy them today. There is a new uh, EVM 12L, which is the modern day version, also weighs 19 pounds, Super Duty, rated for 200 watts out of a single 8 ohm speaker. So we, we have one of those here too, but right now we're not going to AB them. We're going to go with the uh, more uh, vintage, vintage sounding speakers. Uh, and let's take a listen. Of course, we're going to do some tone exploring. We're going to go exploring in style. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my Somnium guitar. We've got an EMG Passive H4 pickup in here through our Mesa amp. And what I'm going to start out with is playing some clean tones for you. Let's, uh, what I'm going to do is I have an AB switch so we can go from the Celestion to the EV. And that's what I'm going to do. We're going to start out with the Celestion, play a little strumming and then switch to the EV and you all just listen. See what, see what you think we're on the bridge pickup here.
What do you think? You can definitely tell a brightness difference in the EV as a more mid-range than the Celestion does. And the Celestion actually seems like it has less mid-range. That's kind of the design, that's kind of the, the scooped mids characteristic, which a lot of people associate with the G12T. 75 and now you get and you get kind of a more bolder mid-range sound with this so i can just uh a b them again quicker together sorry that's the celestion let's start again celestion to ev Now we've, one of our techs here described this as a more, as the Celestion has a more compressed sound. Seems brighter but tighter, a little more confined. You go to the EV, it seems to open up more. It's broader, but also maybe because it has that more of that mid-range frequency in it. So let's listen to what they sound like with overdrive. Actually, let's listen to what they sound like together. Here's one concept, is that if you have a, a speaker that's got the more mid-range uh, boldness to it, and you got another one that's got that tighter high end to it, why not put both in your speaker cabinet if you have a dual cab that you can do, or, or a four speaker cab? Why not get the best of both worlds? So I'm gonna play the Celestion, the EV, and then together. Go back to just this Celestion. That's with clean. Let's see what happens in overdrive. So we're gonna put our Mesa Express 550. I'm just gonna do a little chugging so you can uh, just hear the difference and I'm gonna AB that for you. Celestion. EV. Now let's play them together. I like it, it's bold. I like having both those speakers on. I'm gonna do just the Celestion. Together. I like that. Being able to have both, no question. It's like, do I want sauce on my pizza or cheese on my pizza or do I want cheese and sauce on my pizza? Even better, right? So why settle for just one? Something to consider when you're comparing speakers. Should I get a cabinet with speaker A or speaker B or how about I set them up with one of each? So if you like the characteristics, and then you could always do what I did is have an AB switch, and if you really wanna just record with one type of sound for a particular song, just shut off the other speaker. It's, it's possible to set that up in a cabinet so you can uh, put them in, hook them up to your amp independently. But we wanted to bring you these tones here today, so please give us, uh, give us some comments down below. Let us know what you think. If there are certain speakers you're curious about, or um, have some comments about the test or what, what we're doing here, um, uh, would like to hear more. Hey, we're open to ideas. We would love to hear from you, so please let us know. And don't forget to like, share, and su subscribe to our channel. And uh, again, I'm Mark. Looking forward to seeing you here again next week on Guitar Tone Central.